Good evening, YouTube. So what I wanted to kind of explore this evening was the difference between electromechanical relays, uh, which these are designed for use with an Arduino. Um, this is a two relay board, uh, low voltage, five volt input, um, and they can support up to 10 amps output on each relay. Um, they do have the common normally open, normally closed, some of the uh, lesser expensive relays uh, only have the common and normally closed, so it's only breaking one side. And then I also have a eight channel SSD uh, or SSR, solid state relay um, assembly that's also used for an Arduino. Uh, it has the header pin here uh, where you can hook jumpers directly to an Arduino, or it's got the uh, screw terminals here you can hardwire it into an Arduino or a propeller, um, any of the open prototyping boards. Uh, so one thing I wanted to take a look at today was to hook these up to my oscilloscope. I have a Fluke 19102. It's a two channel 1.25 gigahertz uh, oscilloscope. I want to see the rise and fall times um, and the deviation between signal activation coming from the Arduino and how long it takes to energize the relay and output a signal. Uh, now one reason these SSR solid state relays are very popular is they have uh, virtually no switching time. They have no moving mechanical components. Um, the internal structure of them is similar to a triac um, or a transistor uh, to where it's all silicon based switching and so it takes very low voltage in and we can switch a very high current on the output side. Um, these are both 100% duty cycle. Uh, they are both 5 volt input, so they'll, they're plug and play with your any Arduino that you might have, um, and they're great for uh, creating little homebrew projects. One reason I really like the SSRs, um, not only is there no lag, which we'll see in the oscilloscope later, um, in switching, uh, so if you're doing anything that's time-based, like uh, relay timing or LED timing, like sequencing, um, you don't have to factor in that delay in the relay. And also the cycle count, how long uh, these SSRs will last, are typically four or five times what the electromechanical version, the, the brother of them two are. So let me get all this hooked up to my oscilloscope, and I will be right back. Okay, so here's the setup. Uh, kind of sketchy, but it is what it is. I have an Arduino Uno over here. Uh, this is the two relay relay board. Uh, it's hooked up to the computer. I have just the Blink program open. Uh, it's set up on pin number seven, and it just goes high every two minutes or every two seconds. It goes low every two seconds and just cycles back and forth. Uh, the red lead here goes to channel A of my oscilloscope, so it'll show up red on the screen. Uh, the blue is my channel B, which is going to be on the output side of this relay. Uh, the red channel A is going to be daisy chained into the input side of this relay board, which is the output of the Arduino. So we'll be able to see the timing it takes from when it receives the output from the Arduino to when it fires this relay, and we can see if there's any time degradation uh, or, or lack thereof. Um, or if, anything, if there's anything you need to compensate for uh, when you go to set this up for any type of project that requires sequencing. Okay, so I'll be right back. I'm going to get the camera adjusted on the oscilloscope, and we'll see you in just a second. Okay, so I've let this run. I set it up for uh, multi-shot uh, with a two-second time variant. Uh, so each of these peaks that you see in this waveform are the relay turning on and turning off. Um, and it's set at two seconds, which is what I have the Arduino cycling at. And it's activating exactly at two seconds uh, each time that you see the rise in this waveform. And then when you see the drop-off, that's de-energizing or pulling the, output lo the input low. Uh, forcing the relay to turn off. So I'm going to zoom in here as close as I can. 
to get a shot of the actual drop off time. And yeah, this is at 40 millisecond uh, time base. And you can see the red line up top is the line, the output from the Arduino from pin seven going to the input of the relay board. The blue line is the output of the relay. Um, so there is a noticeable difference. It's probably not more than about 10 milliseconds, um, but this can become cumulative if you're running a program that requires extremely stringent timing. Um, this deviation and time lap might grow uh, over the course of the program if the whatever program you're running runs for days or weeks. Um, so that's something to keep in mind if you're using conventional or electromagnetic relays um, is to take that into account if it's applicable for your application. Uh, most applications that you would use one of these for, it's probably won't be that stringent on timing, um, but it may very well be just something to be aware of. So I'm going to get all this disconnected. I'll get the solid state relay hooked up. Um, I'll show you it cycling and then we'll run a snapshot on it uh, and see what that one looks like. Okay, I got the eight channel solid state relay assembly hooked up. Uh, same setup as before. Uh, the red channel A on my oscilloscope is tapped into uh, output seven from the Arduino going to input one on the relay board and you can see the the relay is turning on and off by the the led indicator uh, these ssrs do not make any noise um, so you generally have to hook something up to the output to know if it's actually working or not um, and then the blue lead over here is hooked up to the output of the relay uh, the common pin is jumpered over to my five volts which powers this relay board from the arduino um, and it's just tied into the five volt pin here. So I got everything hooked up to the scope. I'm gonna run a multi-shot, get a screenshot of its operation. Um, and we expect to see exactly as we did with the mechanical relay, but then we'll zoom in and take a look at it and see what type of time shift or, or difference or deviation uh, there is from the input to the output. Okay, we got our screenshot. Let me get the camera focused in on the screen. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and zoom in like we did before and take a look. Let me center the wave. Okay, so as you can see here, uh, this is the, the same as before. It's set up for more 40 millisecond uh, time base. And if you look at this line here, they both trigger exactly at the same time, and they both release exactly at the same time. Uh, my scope does not go, I don't believe, no. The smallest my scope goes is uh, 40 milliseconds. I can't get any, any smaller of time than that. Um, but anything less than that, and it, it'd be probably negligible on the impact it may have on any of your projects. Um, so overall, on all of my projects I do with Arduinos and propellers, um, as well as, uh, oh, what's that other prototyping board? Uh, I can't think of the name of it right now. Um, but I have swapped pretty much everything over to the solid state relays. Um, just because they're a little bit cheaper, they're more reliable, they have a much longer lifespan, 
um, and they're quieter. They don't have that clicking noise going back and forth. Um, and the only thing to give you indication that they're working uh, would either be whatever's hooked up to the output or watching that LED. So you do have a visual indicator uh, that the relay is more than likely functioning. Uh, but overall, I really like the solid state relays. Uh, like I said, I've switched all my projects over from mechanical relays to solid state. The downside that I see to solid state is uh, these have generally lower amperage capacities. Um, these electromechanical relays, these particular ones are rated for 10 amps at 300 volts. Uh, these uh, SSR relays, although they're really good relays, surprisingly enough, this board came from China, um, but they actually used um, real Omron relays. Um, and I looked in their documentation to find any type of cycle timing um, or cycle life expectancy, like you can find with mechanical relays. Uh, most mechanical relays are, are 10 or 15,000 cycles, um, which is when it can turn on and off, and that's its average life expectancy before the contacts wear out. Um, I couldn't find anything on the solid state relays in the way of uh, any type of life, to, life expectancy, um, and that's probably because the internals of it are very similar to a transistor, um, so they're all silicon based, there's no moving parts. There's really no contacts to arc against or wear out. Uh, there's no copper pads in there like there are, or copper contacts like there are in the mechanical relays. And there's no coil moving back and forth, so there's no moving parts. Um, so I would expect that their life expectancy would be a lot longer. Um, but these are only rated for two amps at 240 volts, um, 50 or 60 hertz. Uh, so it's about a fifth of the capacity of what these electromechanical ones are. But if you're doing low amperage applications or you can afford to split the load up among multiple relays, um, these are a really great choice. And these boards are, are dirt cheap. I think I paid about eight or nine bucks for this on uh, Amazon, I believe. Um, and it's been a pretty solid board. I have six others of these uh, working full time in other projects that I built around the house. Um, and I really enjoy them. So if you're looking for a relay solution and you're going for kind of a low output, no noise uh, installation, you might look into these. These are, seem to be a really good option. Uh, if you have any questions on these or any of the other stuff in Arduinos, I'm going to start doing more Arduino videos. Um, post a comment below or shoot me a message and I'll do my best to get it answered. Um, if you like what you saw here, uh, please give me the thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like so you can see new stuff coming out. Um, I'm still new to YouTube, so I'm putting a ton of videos out there just kind of seeing what everybody's into. Uh, but if you have any comments, definitely post those below as well. I'd be grateful to hear them. And we'll see you next time.